Hi guys, this is John with Music Greatness. Today we're looking at Red Room by Hiatus Coyote. We'll start with the intro which sounds like this. So what you just heard there was the intro to Red Room. We're in the key of B minor here, which is the same as D major. It's got two sharps. So a C sharp and an F sharp. But as you've just seen in this intro, we do use quite a few other notes that are outside of that key signature. And we've got some really interesting chords to look at here, so let's break them down. We're gonna start with an F sharp minor over B. So that's a B for the left hand, and then the right hand has an F sharp minor chord in root position, F sharp, A and C sharp. Then we've got a C sharp 7, so that's 4, that's a C sharp for the left, F sharp and B for the right hand. And that moves very smoothly down to the next chord, which is C major 7. So now we've got a C in the left, E and B for the right hand. Then we have G major 7. So that's G in the left, F sharp and B for the right. Next up we've got a classic jazz piano voicing. This is a B minor 9. B for the left and then A, C sharp, D and F sharp for the right. And then we've got a G sharp minor seven flat five. If it was a normal G sharp minor seven, it would have a D sharp here. This would be the natural five, but we're gonna make it a flat five by playing this D. So that's G sharp, D, F sharp, and B. There's another name for this chord, which is a G sharp half diminished. Either is fine. Then we're gonna to move to a G sharp minor seven. That is G sharp in the left hand, F sharp and B. This time there's no fifth in the chord. And then the final chord for this section is a C13. Now that again is a very classic jazz piano voicing. That is a C in the left hand, B flat, E and A for the right hand. If that's not comfortable, you can also do the E with your second finger here. Now, the hold of this song all the way up until the outro could be broken up into two different sets of two bar phrases. A type A, which looks like this in the left hand. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and a one. So that's a type A, and a type B looks like this. One, and two, and three, and a four, and one, two, three, four, E and a one. Throughout this whole song, we're just gonna be going back and forth between type A phrases and type B phrases, all the way through until part five, where we look at the outro. The left hand will almost always just do one of those two bass lines that you've just seen, whereas your right hand will have quite a few interesting variations as it's mimicking Napalm's guitar. The peculiar thing about this intro is that we're actually going to start with a type B phrase. And you'll see why we've labelled it a type B phrase once you get onto the second part of this tutorial, which is the verse, because Napalm starts singing on a type A phrase. So the bass line is broken down like this. We've got a B, C sharp and D. Then I'm gonna skip this grace note for a second and go straight to a G sharp on the and of beat two. And then on the and of beat three, we have F sharp and D, and these are 16th notes. So that's three and a four 
We've got a C sharp on beat four and a G sharp on the end of beat four. So that's one and two and three and a four and. And it's really important to get the right fingering from the get go here, otherwise you run out of fingers quite quickly. So we start on three and then two on this G sharp and notice that my thumb is staying underneath here on this D. And when you're ready, we'll add in that grace note. So the grace note is the F sharp, which approaches this G sharp on the end of beat two. So that'll be one and two and three and uh, four and. And then in the next bar, which is the second bar of the type B phrase, we hold this G sharp from the previous bar on beat one and two. Then on beat three, we have a G. And on beat four, we have a C. And then on the fourth, 16th note of beat four, we also have a C. So that whole bar from the end of the previous bar looks like this. And one, two, three, four E and our one. So let's recap the first two bars of the song just in the left hand. One and two and three and our four and one, two, three, four E and our one. And now let's add in some right hand here. In the first bar, your right hand has only one note and it comes in on the and of beat two as your left hand plays this grace note. And it's gonna be at the same time as the F sharp as opposed to at the same time as the G sharp. So it's not this, rather this. So that's all we have to do for the first bar. And now let's look at this second bar, which is a bit trickier. So we've got an F sharp on the end of beat one. Then on beat two, we've got two 16th notes. Two E, B and C sharp. And then on beat three, we've got nothing on the downbeat. And then on the second and third 16th note, we've got F sharp and B. So that's three E and A. Three E and A, four. So we've got the E on beat four. And on beat four here, we're doing exactly the same rhythm as the left hand. So four E and A. So that's a D on the fourth 16th note there. And then we've got a C sharp at the beginning of the next bar. So the whole of that second bar looks like this. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Now let's put the two hands together. One and two and three and a four and one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one. All right, so that's the first type B phrase taken care of. Next we have a type A phrase. Type A phrases always have the bass line that looks like this. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and a one. So we start the first bar of this phrase with a B. Then on the end of beat two, we go down to a C sharp. And a beat four, we're on a C. And now we're into the next bar. We're gonna hold this all the way until the end of beat two, where we play a G. And then on the end of beat four, we'll use our little finger on an A and walk up with two 16th notes back to a B. And our one. So with the counting, those two bars in the left hand look like this. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, 
and a one. And now let's add in the right hand here. We'll start with this C sharp, which then moves down very quickly to play the other two notes of the F sharp minor chord that you learned in the breakdown. So it'll be C sharp, A, F sharp, one E and A. Then in the and of beat two with the left hand, you're gonna do the upper part of that C sharp seven sus four chord. And then on the and of beat three, you jump up with your little finger to play a B and then come back down on the and of beat four to play this C major seven. So the whole of that bar looks like this. One E and a two and three and four and. And now continuing through to the next bar, we'll carry on with this offbeat rhythm. We'll hold this C major seven from the end of the previous bar and then on the and of beat one, we jump up to a B. Then on the and of beat two, we play a G major seven that you've already learned. And on the and of beat three, up to a B again. And then to finish that bar, there's nothing else for the right hand to do. Your left hand will just finish with these two 16th notes on the and of beat four. So now to recap that whole type A phrase in both hands. One E and a two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a one. Now we're going to make use of that B minor nine chord that you learned in the breakdown. So to recap, we started with a type B phrase and then a type A and now we're going to do a type B again. And just as before, this type B phrase will use this bass line. So nothing new there, but the right hand is now going to be doing some more full chords. So we're going to start with this B minor 9 on beat 1, and then we'll do the G sharp minor 7 flat 5 on the and of beat 2. And then jump down to a G sharp minor 7 on the and of beat 4. So that whole bar looks like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and a four, and. Then we'll start this next bar in exactly the same way as the second bar of this song, with the left hand holding this G sharp, and your right hand does one and two E and A. So that starts off the same, but then for the second half of this bar, we're gonna do something new. Of course, the left hand stays the same, but the right hand will now make this G major seven chord on beat three. And we're gonna hold the top two notes of this chord while the bottom two notes quickly change between a B and a F sharp and back to a B again. So you see how my upper two notes were held and I just did one E and A, alternating the bottom two notes. One E and A. And then we'll jump up to this C13 chord that you've learned. And then we'll finish on the final 16th note of the bar with a D, just like in the second bar of the song. Four E and A. Now this is quite a strange jump to move down to put my fourth finger on this D. But the reason is because in the next bar, we're going to be playing this F sharp minor over B again. Only this time we've got an F sharp on top as well. So we need all our fingers available to be able to play that. So this is very similar to the third bar of the song where you did C sharp, A and F sharp. But this time we've got C sharp and F sharp at the top to begin with followed by A and F sharp as before. So let's recap the previous bar going into this so you can see how it links up. And one, and two, E, and a three, E, and a four, E, and a one, E, and. 
And now we'll recap the past two bars going into this. So this is a type B phrase here going into a type A. One and two and three and a four and one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So now into this next bar, we're back on a type A phrase. The left hand is the same as before, and the right hand is very similar to what we did before with a couple of little differences. As you know, the first difference is that we start with this F sharp at the top instead of just playing C sharp, A and F sharp. So we're gonna do one E and a two, and then on the end of beat two, same as before. But the only difference now is that we're gonna, instead of jumping up to a B, as we were doing before on the off beats, we're just gonna do it an octave lower. So it's the B that's right next to middle C. So it'll be and three and four and one and two and three. And this time we won't do it on the and of beat three like we did previously, we'll just leave it there. So there's three little differences there. So to recap those two bars, one E and a two and three and four and one and two and three, four. And then the 16th note bass line taking us into the final type B phrase to finish this intro section. Now this type B here is exactly the same as the previous type B. So there's absolutely nothing new to learn here. One and two and three and a four and one and two e and a three e and a four e and a one and we're now at the downbeat of the verse where napalm starts to sing that'll be a type a phrase which is how all three verses of this song begin so to recap the form this intro started with a type b then a type a then a b then an A and then another B. So that's five sets of two bars, which makes 10 bars in total. Now let's recap this whole intro section at a reduced tempo. And once that's comfortable, let's then recap the whole thing one more time at full speed. All right, so that's all for the first part of this tutorial. If you'd like to learn the rest of the song where we'll be looking at verse one, two, and three, as well as the outro, which is quite different, you can find it over at musicgreatness.com. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.